to quote the wise words of Freddie Mercury, and bad mistakes, I've made a few. Yeah. This is not one of the more proud moments of my life, but uh, I gave myself a wacko haircut. It's okay. I'll have a haircut in a couple days to hopefully fix it. Based on the title of this video, we're going to be seeing if pushing Ilford Delta 3200 three stops is a mistake that I'll regret, or if it'll be an insane cool party trick that I can pull out whenever I want. Now, where did I... Ah, there's, there's my beanie. Let's cover up this monstrosity, huh? So, starting from the beginning, I've shot 3200 speed film before, T-Max 3200, and I thought it was extremely grainy especially since they only make it in 35 millimeter format. I wasn't a huge fan of how much grain was on the film, but given that Ilford Delta 3200 is available in larger film sizes, such as 120, I don't know if they make it for any size larger, but I could shoot this film on a six by 4.5 or even a six by nine camera like this right here, the Fujika GL690. This camera sports a monstrous negative size of six by nine. Anyways, the inspiration for this video kind of came from another video I watched on YouTube of someone comparing Kodak's T-Max 3200 to Ilford's 3200. And I noticed that Ilford's 3200 was much lower in contrast than the T-Max, so I thought, what if you could get HP5 push two-stop results from this 3200 while also being able to shoot in the twilight hours when the sun has set? Maybe it's past blue hour already and you're getting into night scenes and I think we might be onto something here. And up until that point, I had been carrying this behemoth and my digital camera and my other 35 millimeter camera. Cue the video of me talking about what cameras I was bringing. But I had been carrying all of this stuff around all day and by the time I took this camera out of my bag, I was relieved. <laughs> the bag's weight went down so much. So this lens doesn't go below f3.5, which is kind of a slow shutter speed if you want to shoot at night. And that's another positive for shooting 3200 three stops overexposed is that even during twilight and night I was still able to hold this camera handheld. So what did I take pictures of with this camera? I whipped this camera out right after we got done at the camera obscura in California and it was just about after sunset and I figured this was as good a time as any to get some mid-twilight shots to night shots. And the first photo I took was of the building that uh, is in front of the camera obscura. I metered for inside the window with my phone and everything within the window looks to be preserved very well. And there's a faint outline of the building. So it seems like it captured a little bit of light off the building even though it was facing away from the sunset and you can see the sunset is very well preserved. After that photo, since we were all taking film photos and night photography wasn't really on our agenda, we pretty much hopped on a bus and headed back to the hotel. It was at this moment that I realized that I could use artificial light sources to light a scene pretty evenly. So I turned to face the gentleman that was sitting across from me on the bus and I realized that the strip light above my head was lighting up uh, him very well and the amount of detail in this photo is astonishing. If you have a medium format camera definitely consider shooting Ilford 3200 pushed two 
or more stops. Three, you can get away with it. The contrast is very nice. I learned something very valuable when it comes to nighttime photography and photographing scenes as opposed to light sources is you need to make sure that it is uh, lit up pretty well, your scene. And this one is not lit up at all. You can make out that the woman is walking there except only after staring at it for a little bit. I wish I could say I was more proud of this photo. It had all the bones to make up a great composition, but it falls flat given that you can't make out very well what everything is other than the psychic sign. Earlier in the morning, Paul had taken a bunch of Polaroids of all of us in the group, and I decided I was going to take a photo of those Polaroids to get more meta, and I thought that would be cool. Um, so when we got back to the hotel, I ended up taking this photo of all the Polaroids that Paul had taken that day, and even the quote that came in the cartridge of Polaroids. Again, the detail level is fine. 25,600 ISO on film is pretty insane. And when you're shooting in this large of a medium format camera, I'm happy to get what I can. The last photo I'm gonna talk about in this video is this photo of the four people that I went to San Francisco with. When you're hanging out with friends, it's something magical to have photos to remind you of the adventures that you had and the things you did. And I think pushing this film three stops allows me to do that in dimly lit hotels that typically have maybe five light bulbs to a flat. So that brings us to where we are now. Reviewing the negatives, reviewing the scans, and ultimately deciding, will I do this again? Will I do this again? Tammy, oh, Tammy. You tell me you love me, but I know that's a lie. And I wonder, why don't you love me? This has gone cold and there's ice in your smile and I wonder why don't you love me anymore I forgot to mention that the hardest part of getting this whole thing put together was convincing the lab I went to to process this film for three stops, which is upwards of 10 minutes, I believe, in the, uh, in the soup. <laughs>